Hello there, and welcome to the Evolve Now podcast, number 147. This is Infinity. Now, that is if I actually decide to (laughs) uh, post this, release this, upload it, whatever, um, publish it, because I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth right now. (laughs) Um, I just had a situation. And not so if I'm going to light my candles. Whoa, that is some torchy fire. Okay. I just had a situation with my new neighbor who just showed up yesterday um, in the house that's one, not right next to me, but the two over. But the space in between us is my vacant lot, basically. I rented it so people wouldn't move in there. Um because I've grown increasingly more energetically sensitive as time has gone on. I always have been. Um, But since my spiritual awakening, I've really understood um, a lot of things. But one of those things is that uh, the environment that I'm in every day, whether it's home or work or both, which is my home is my my workplace, that it needs to to be as static free as possible and when i was guided to move up here to the mountains um i felt a big shift even though i still have like people relatively close to me just a few feet away um because it's a it's a trailer park essentially uh they kind of turned into more like um like little cabins but there are just spaces for like rvs and trailers so i mean it's kind of a hodgepodge but anyway um still it was offset by being in nature being five almost six thousand feet above the flatlands of of southern california where i've lived my whole life in orange county um from the time i was like six or seven before that, I was in San Diego County, um, California, and I was born in Colombia, South America, um, but moved to San Diego when I was like six months old. So anyhow, um, I moved around not not a lot as a, as a kid. Once my parents moved to Santa Ana, California, um that's pretty much where they where we were from the time I was like maybe seven or eight something like that um and they kept that through they probably still have it um I don't know because I do not speak to my family um I did write about that in, the, in these last articles on Medium. So if you want some more about me and my lovely upbringing. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> and there's so much more I can write. Holy shit. The stories I could tell, man. About that. <laughs> could fill volumes. I, I've often thought like. I know at some point I need to write about like my life story experiences and stuff but when I think about it it's just so 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 much so much so fucking much just so fucking much (laughs) just my from 0 to 18 is a lot and then from 18 to see 21 or 22 and then 22 to 30 and then 30 to 40 and then 40 to nearly 50 now i mean each one of these sections of time have been just a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot and a lot mostly negative too by the way (laughs) it's only in these last couple years that things have you know, taking a, you know, real upswing in my world. Um, it's been a very, a 
very challenging journey. <laughs> and today was another one of those days where you're just like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, <sighs> why? <laughs> why do people have to be the way that they are? And then I know why they are because I'm the one who teaches about it, but still... <laughs> You know, you have these moments, even though you know a lot of shit when you're in the shit, like I say a lot of the times, it's just really frustrating because it's like, fuck, man. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. <laughs> Never ending all the time. And lately it's been about home base and trying to make it feel comfortable and in some ways that being feeling very good and successful but you know in my own space just with me in my world with my animals in my garden but then everybody around me in this place is just like <laughs> uh, especially immediately around me and it's just developed to be more contentious, more like violently like nasty recently. A couple weeks ago, my one neighbor came over. This is the most fucking ridiculous thing. I <laughs> I I've had a lot of, you know, neighbors in my time and there's been all sorts of situations, but never have I thought that I would <laughs> experience something like this he comes over i he never first off let me just preface this by saying he moved in around nine months or a year ago somewhere in there and he's um he's never been friendly he's always been standoffish um he has a big um female doberman dog uh and that's just a, a detail that will come up and um I can tell by the way he is with her and the way he, he does things just by observing him that he's not a natural animal person and that like animal intuitiveness doesn't come naturally to him um and there's like this weird disconnect between them and he doesn't yeah, and he's not, like, a typical dog owner when it comes to his dog and, like, caring about her feelings. Let's put it that way. Um, so, anyhow, the, the cool thing is about him is that he is rarely here. He's, like, a phantom neighbor. When he is, he's here for, like, days at a time or maybe a couple weeks and then if that and then he just has this pat pattern of being gone for sometimes long I think he was gone for one point like two or three months I was like does he still live there like how weird but I loved it because it was just less energy and um you know to contend with <sighs> and even though I live in this teeny teeny small town we don't even have a street light um there's like maybe four or five thousand people running around here max per day and I think that's stretching it by probably half <laughs> um I really think so there was just it's a very tiny town but I live in this like in the center of it like right where like one little bit over from the main street so I do hear and feel the traffic all day long um and hear voices from the street and do have neighbors close to me you know so it's not like I'm up in the mountains like totally secluded and nobody is around me all the time and I have to take 20 minutes to get into town that sounds fantastic but that's not the case um and so anyway uh but we are in the mountains there's wildlife here if you if you know me and seen my content um there's skunks and raccoons and rats and possum and birds and squirrels and chipmunks and gophers and coyotes and bears and <laughs> a 
all sorts of shit. Um, where, where I live, we don't have the coyotes or the bears or mountain lions or anything like that because I am in the center, like I said. So if I was in the more secluded places, then it would be, that would be, like, that's a problem too because of my animals. So it it does come with, with a pluses and minuses being in the center of town because the coyotes have no reason to come here to hunt for cats because they have the whole mountain of all sorts of shit that they can hunt including you know domestic cats but um and that does happen for sure uh it's really sad you see these posters at the grocery store just 24 7 of cats missing dogs too but mostly cats um and it's like yep that cat's never gonna be seen again (laughs) like it's just yeah um anyway uh so this is legit uh legit forest legit mountains and um anyhow so this neighbor doesn't like i say he doesn't he's not friendly if we happen to cross paths he pretends he doesn't see me he never says just hi how you doing like doesn't even try to be friendly by any stretch of the imagination and I stopped trying a long time ago because his response back to me was just so cold and rude I would just be like oh this is fucking stupid why do I bother um so it's a bummer but you know like I said he's barely here and we barely cross paths like if I'm outside he waits till I come in to leave usually like I'll come in and then I'll see him go outside like and get in his car it's really funny um because he doesn't want to cross paths with me for whatever reason um up until this incident we never had anything other than just normal dialogue between us but he's not friendly at least to me so anyhow um he so i'm making my lunch and my door is open a lot of times in the spring and the summer especially if it's nice out i leave the door open so the cats can come in and out i'm not worried about people just walking into my house um I feel relatively safe here to a degree and um let let me just say I've never had a reason to not feel safe here uh so anyway it's kind of like off the beaten path uh where I live even though it is in the center of the town um which is kind of very unique in its own little enchanted way um And it's definitely enchanted space, that's for sure. Uh, Very magical area here that I was guided to. But it has not come without the balance of darkness for me to contend with time and time again. Since I came up here in September of 2017, it's been dramatic and traumatic at times. Um, But anyway, so couple Sundays ago he knocks on my on my door I go out there and I'm surprised to see him it's just him he's holding his dog's leash and he he just starts saying so last night I took my dog out for a walk and she got skunked and now she stinks and my whole house stinks and I can't you know it's it's like really bad and blah 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 and I'm just like okay like (laughs) waiting for it to be like why he's telling me about this because he hasn't talked to me and he's clearly upset at me and and I'm like like just listening you know just like okay and then finally he goes so I see that you have food and water out here and I've seen them come over here so you know that's what happened or something to that effect and I was like processing this going oh you 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 blame me because your dog got skunked like, that is fucking hilarious. To, like, what? Like, it was so unbelievably crazy, insane, out of line. What the fuck? Like, you didn't run this by anybody, clearly. Because I would think most people would be like, you can't blame your neighbor because they're skunks. And your dog got skunked. 
if it's anybody's fault, it's yours. She's your dog. <laughs> and you know they're skunks. You know? But I go, so, okay, so he's looking at me and I'm like, oh, so let me get this straight. I want to make sure I understand you correctly. Your dog got skunked last night. Sorry to hear that, by the way. And you blame me for this because there's bulls out here or whatever. And he was like, well, yeah, I see him coming over here. And I go, well, first off, I really don't leave food out here that like all the time. And then I'm just kind of thinking like, so fucking what? I'm looking at the water and I go, the water's out all the time. And it just isn't, and if it, it clicked later that if anything, that the skunks go for the water, I see them drinking the water all the time. And I have many, that's not the only water bowl that I have. It's just the only one that he sees <laughs> from his perspective. But in my yard, I have several. And, um, yeah. So, anyway, I was just like... Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not doing any, I'm not changing anything. I'm not taking anything away. It's not my fault that, and it's crazy for you to think and come over here and blame me for it, that your dog got skunked. Like, no, <laughs> no. Like, what the, like the fucking nerve on this guy. Seriously, seriously. The fucking nerve of this guy. <laughs> and then he's like, yeah, okay, well, fine. You know, um, if you're going to be an asshole about it. And I'm like, oh, now we're named. And I were calling me an asshole. Now I'm the asshole. It's amazing how that happens. It's amazing how people will be utterly out of line and call you the asshole. Because you're not taken the shit that this asshole is squeezing out <laughs> here since you're going to be an asshole about it and he picks up his hand with his leash in his hand and he shakes it at me he picks it up and he kind of puts it in my face he pushes it in my face a bit and i'm like looking at him I'm like what the fuck and he goes well, then maybe I just won't put my leash on my dog and I'll just let her loose to take care of this, to take care of, you know, to get all your cats. And I'm like, what? Like, I'm just looking at him. Cohen, you threatening my fucking cats with your dog? Is this actually my life right now? Oh, I think right before that is when um, I said, no, my cats are out here. They need to drink and sometimes need to eat. And I, no, like, I'm just like, N he's like, well, your cat should all be inside anyway. And I'm like, oh my God, now you're really. And that's when he talked about t getting his dog to take care of the cats because they're outside. Because, like, it all goes back to the cats because the food is out there essentially for the cats. But let me let me just preface this by saying even if I had zero cats, I would still have water outside for the wildlife because it's just a nice thing to do. Even if I didn't feed them food, which I do, and he doesn't know about it. <laughs> I don't broadcast my business, and he wasn't talking about that, and he was already giving me shit about the sometimes food I leave out for my cats if they've been out all night and didn't come home and I have an, like a, a, a meeting with a client and I need to shut my door and you know they're not going to come in I'll leave food out there or if they're not coming home at night I'll leave food out there so they can eat or whoever gets to it can eat which is not usually the skunks because it's way too high where I put it so they just come for the water um, but anyway <laughs> so I had that situation oh and is it, if that wasn't enough after this goes down and when and after he says to me um the thing about the cats and the dog and everything I go how I go oh so I go I go who says this thing about all my cats inside I don't even know why I posed the question I think I was just like so flabbergasted that he would suggest that I like well 
I'm telling you, you should have your cats inside is basically what he was saying to me. And I'm just like, or no, he made it sound like it's just a known thing. Your cats should be inside. That's the way it should be. And that's a whole other fucking conversation about indoor and outdoor cats and what is what with them in any particular situation and environment. That's not a clear cut this or that answer. And I wasn't about to get into it with him about my cats and what is what with all of them in the whole what. No, fuck that and fuck him. Just the fact that he would suggest that all of my cats should be inside just shows how fucking insanely retarded he is. And yes, I say retarded. And I say fuck. And I say all the fucking words when I want to. Because I'm a goddamn motherfucking adult. And nobody gets to tell me what I can and cannot say. Dirty words or otherwise. <laughs> I guess you could say I'm a little fired up with the shit I've been dealing with. And that's not even to say what happened the day before what happened with him about my other neighbor and his load of shit. The biggest one of all. And I'm not going to get into it. I'm just not. Just not. <laughs> but after that, on Saturday... I went, okay, it's definitely time to start processing the inevitability of moving from here. It's just, yeah. <laughs> Even if I rented this space next to me, um, it, that solved a little bit of a problem of somebody being literally two feet from my, from my space here. Cause he has these cramps so tight, of course, to make the most money possible. Um, so it's like, I had to rent the space next to me and I swear to God, if it wasn't for these other assholes in the neighborhood, um, I would try to rent the other space next to me just so I could avoid <laughs> <laughs> and kick that neighbor out oh my god <laughs> just so I could avoid having to look for a place move and all that it's just so much fucking time energy effort work and the whole fucking thing like I have fantasies of just being like I'm not taking anything I'm leaving every single fucking thing here and I'm just leaving like I wouldn't do that but I fantasize about it <laughs> like the only thing I can think of taking are, you know, like, it depends, like, like, and then I, it starts just expanding. Well, of course I would take my plants. Of course I would take my crystals. And that's like, literally those things comprise most of my shit. <laughs> What's left? Furniture. Yeah. Maybe I would leave the furniture. Um, maybe except for a couple of things, a small amount of my clothes, like, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, it's really not that much stuff. It just feels like a lot because it's spread out. But I've really downgraded a lot of my life as far as belongings um, over time. Just energetically, it's good for you to not have a lot of shit attached to you. Um, and... what you do have should be you know important and meaningful and I definitely have things that I don't need and should go but they're not it's not a lot it's really not not at this point <laughs> I've moved so much um like seriously I've moved so much anyway um so what happened on Saturday after that happened on Saturday and it did involve my landlord. And I did tell him, you know what? This is the last straw. I'm, I'm definitely going to be processing leaving here. It's just too much of 
everybody and their bullshit and me always getting the short end of the stick no matter what transpired or how things got to where they were and how I am literally never the one who starts the shit fucking ever ever and if I did trust me I would definitely own it I'm just that type of person but (laughs) there has never been one situation in this fucking park of drama that I was involved with that didn't come at me from somebody else first and then I had to deal with that shit every fucking time every time including this crazy dude with this fucking grievance about skunks and it's and it's my fault that his dog got skunked I mean literally the audacity the narcissism and the ego and the displaced responsibility that you have to have going on for that to be part of you know the the computation of shit that registers in your brain that says yep that's about right (laughs) it's like what the fuck is wrong with you what in the fuck is wrong with you? So I've got that. So I had I had crazy shit going down on Saturday. And I already went, okay, time for bye-bye. It's time for me to start thinking bye-bye here. Because it's been nearly five years of... It's been a while since there's been a ruckus. About a year or maybe a little bit more since there's been an any kind of anything with anybody. It's been relatively quiet. But it was with that neighbor next door and it's coming up again and again my landlord just decides to appease him and fuck me over (laughs) and I'm really tired of it so um and and not only that but when things are when things when people go out of their way to inconvenience someone or hurt someone just out of vengeance you're dealing with with evil let's make no mistake here let's make no mistake here and I thought maybe over the last year and a half possibly he would have fucking like done a little bit of work on himself and and what happened between us before and not continue with wanting to cause me pain and drama and throwing a shit ton of negative energy at me but I but I you know I hope I always hope for people to be their best the best version of who they can possibly be because that's what I see in people. That's what I know that is un- is in there. But they a lot of times are taken over by really powerful negative entities that attach to them and make them t- literally turn them into these narcissistic human monsters. And again, I wrote a couple of articles about it. That you can read or listen to on medium.com. I know a lot about this shit. Not just from a practical life experience situation from the time I was born. But also from the spiritual side and the information that I've gotten. You know from my divine counterparts. Our divine counterparts to help me understand. Because I, I knew I needed to understand. Because I saw it so many times so many people not only with myself but with other people with each other and I'm like what in the fuck is with this what is this what is this I need to understand I need to understand what this is I knew I needed to understand it I knew that it was a key to a lot to something that was absolutely necessary to understand and then I did I got the downloads and I 
was in a lot of ways given very real practical experience to really, really understand. So I could, you know, connect the dots and help other people understand and do what they needed to do to overcome these types of situations, these relationships, these experiences, these places that we find ourselves in with these people and I literally I'm I'm just like processing the fact that for whatever reason it's this experience it's more of this experience with this one person my one longtime neighbor once friend who just turned over and over and over again monstrous towards me because of what he allows to attach to him and take over him and play into regardless of knowing why you know just to separate us just to separate us it's like it's just so messed up but he plays right into it you know people play just right into it it's like you really want to have bad energy with your neighbors all of these people want to have bad shit with me and I (laughs) it's the last thing I want it's the last thing that I yeah it's the last thing that I that I want I want a peaceful, really peaceful environment to live in, but it seems to be fucking impossible here. Like, these are the types of things it's like when you outgrow a situation, like no matter there, it's out of balance. And I know that. <laughs> I, I know that. I know that I'm the thing that's out of place here. They belong together and I don't belong here with them. They can be like that with each other or whatever, repel each other because they're all the same and they probably would repel each other. But I'm here, so I'm the thing that they need to feed off of whenever they get a chance and turn dark side and come at me when I don't do a fucking thing except for just try to just keep to myself, keep it real, work my ass off take care of myself the best way i can take care of the animals the best way i can do everything by myself everything and that's okay because that's just the way it needs to be right now it's not for forever and it's fine But I don't go looking for bullshit. I learned a long time ago, you know, (laughs) like it'll come, it'll come for me. And as protected as, as I, like I said, for a year and a half, it's been not bad. I've just had to deal with my neighbor and feeling his energy and, you know, that's not fun. And having him actually put up reflective shit on his window so he can stand there and stare at me while I'm in my yard and make it impossible for me to be there for any length of time other than just to water my plants like I could never enjoy it I could never just sit out there and enjoy being out there because of him this entire time I've lived here and finally like last just a few weeks ago I put up this retractable like wall thing And of course, that's what started this whole other, of course, of course, of course. Because now when he looks out his fucking window, he doesn't see shit. (laughs) He doesn't see shit. He doesn't see my beautiful garden. He doesn't get to see me. He doesn't get to see into my house at night. Like he's been doing for forever. 
whatever the fuck he feels like and I have there's you know I couldn't I was like what do I do about this and finally like I was just led to this like all you have to do is put a couple poles up and attach this stuff and then you just pull it and hook it and it's this it's this cloth kind of thing and it's waterproof and everything and it's just this like off-white color and that's it it's six feet tall and you just mount it and yeah and if you need to get around you just open it you just pick it up and slide it and or pick it up and unhook it actually and then it just goes right back into itself it's kind of sort of like blinds or whatever like something i don't know like a it's just something you, you know you pull it and you have it and then you retract it and it's gone like literally it takes a second and um it was like such a great solution but of course it's, it's you know set them off about this whole other thing with getting in the yard and it's just fucking retarded like i said you know if when somebody goes out of their way to hurt you to displace you to um make you feel uncomfortable to berate you to belittle you to destroy your property to make this you know any of those types of things that's just evil you know it's like that's 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 beyond being negative or being toxic or being dysfunctional it is being evil and when somebody's evil it's because they really have something nasty attached to them it doesn't mean they have to be evil all the time. doesn't mean that they're evil to 99.9% .9 of the population. It means that it's there and it can kick in and be an, and, and drive a person to do really horrible sh things. Definitely. Definitely. Uncontrollable type things. Things that make no sense. Things that they don't really want to do. Things that they end up feeling bad about. And they go, why do I do that? Why do I think that? Why did I act like that? Why do I think like that? Like, they don't know. They're out of control. And it's because they literally, the reins are in somebody else's hands. Whenever they want to be. And with any little, it could be big or small. With any little thing just to may affect the environment and the energy to be negatively charged versus positively charged because the thing that's attached to them likes the negative energy feeds off of the negative energy not the positive energy and when you can uh, invoke negative energy out of somebody very high vibrational it's even extra juicy for you hence why people come at me it's like, it's like they get triggered whether I have done anything or not, or I could just show up, be in the environment and have an effect on people, both positively and negatively. It just really depends on if they've got that attachment going on. If they do, it, they can, it's completely who knows what can happen. Um, and yeah it's just it's something i I've, I've never really dealt with my whole life because even though i've you know been psychic and physical empath and all that stuff i was too fucked up energetically to be that high vibe to really evoke those types of reactions in people i mean people liked me sometimes they people were standoffish with me but it was never like crazy off the charts swinging in both directions with the pendulum like whoa what do we got here like that's how it is with me ever since I really leveled up and do what I do it's like people are either like oh my god you're amazing I love you your energy you're this you're that you're and they can't get enough or they can be really nasty very quickly with or without any provocation whatsoever and I just have to deal with it as it comes. Always hope for the best, but don't be surprised when people quickly turn nasty 
and threatening like my neighbor from across from we'll call him 25 because that's where he lives so 25 really quickly blamed me for his situation called me an asshole and then threatened my cats and then he went home after like when I said to him you know what's this about being indoors like I was just like what are you saying it's more like I was talking to myself like what are you even like what like and then he starts going well you see when you have cats and they're outside and I was just like oh you know what my guys like you're not standing here and spending one more, more nanosecond listening to this guy not one more nanosecond so I said no you know what I'm not listening to this we're done and he goes oh of course walk away and I walked inside and I slammed the door <laughs> that was it bye and then he went home and then he proceeded to bang on his drums erratically, violently, extremely loudly for the next like two hours. <laughs> I'm like, are you serious? It didn't happen right away. It happened like 10 minutes later. Like it occurred to him after, you know, going home and fuming because he didn't get his way. Like, I don't know what he wanted or what he expected from me. If he actually thought I was going to be like, okay. I'll pick up the food in the water. Okay, yeah, it's all my fault. Okay. <laughs> like, did he really think that? Like, who? Like, I know he doesn't know me, but, you know, like, really? And then he very clearly wanted to threaten me, intimidate me, et cetera, et cetera. And I was just not responding or reacting to him. If anything, I was more, like, shocked and amused and you know, like, what? <laughs> You're, what? <laughs> it was so, like, out of center field from behind me coming. I was like, wait, what? What is happening right now? Your skunk dog, me, my fault? Because I have water out in my house. It's my fault. You're scared. Really? Holy shit. Can you imagine if the world actually worked that way? What we could blame everybody and everything else on? Like. <laughs> oh my god. It's just so fucking stupid. So that was Sunday. And um, after he went home, he does his drums for two hours. And I'm just like, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> like, what kind of a crazy narcissist decides that's okay to be mad with one neighbor, go home, and for the for Sunday afternoon, for two straight hours, just cause all of this noise pollution like loud like that like tinky type of like just drumming like like da -da, just like and erratic like it's it's just it sounded like somebody possessed on 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 the drums which is probably exactly what it was um and then he got tired of himself apparently because then I think he was like shit now I committed to this if I'm home I should probably keep doing the drums just because I started <laughs> I can't stop like, I don't know how that works but you know at some point you're tired of listening to your fucking drums I've got to assume you're tired of your own self being an asshole like what do you do you leave that's what you do you leave so he left but he left his dog his skunky ass dog home because, of course, he didn't want to smell her in the car. He didn't want to put her in the car. Stink up his car. Of course, he got a new car, too. <laughs> so he leaves her. And she proceeds to bark all day into the night. Anytime a car or a person walks by. Or anything got her attention. And he was gone well until nearly like 1130, like over 10, like 10 hours. He just left her at home. What a dick. 
she gets skunked and then he leaves her all day after he stresses her out with fucking drums and is probably being the biggest dick to her because she stinks and he doesn't know what to do about it <laughs> nice just fucking nice lovely lovely like literally the opposite of me same thing with the other person and now that brings me to my newest neighbor who shows up yesterday at 10 o'clock in the morning. I don't know who she is. The place has been like quiet and, and nobody's been there. The person who lives there has been in like hospice care or something like that. And, and nobody, you know, it's nobody's moved in. I guess the, his brother owns it and he just, that's it. I don't know if they hope that he'll be able to come back or what. And it's just been like that for at least five or six months. And so yesterday, Sunday the 3rd, um, around 10 o'clock in the morning, you hear music and loud singing and this person, this woman over there, obviously cleaning. And it's like, what is happening? Um, and I'm just like, who does this like did they hire a cleaning lady and like cleaning ladies would, would it be like all loud like that and I didn't know it was vacant like I never heard anything about it and there's this person over there and um then like two hours go by of her doing the being loud music playing really loud her singing really loud thank god she has a nice voice but still it's like I don't get people that do stuff like that. It's like you're everything you're doing, all the loud you're producing is affecting everybody around you. And you, and you, it's so narcissistic. You know what I mean? Like it's so self-involved that it's like, I want to be loud and I'm going to be loud. I'm going to sing loud. I'm going to have loud music on at 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to be in a place I've never been before in a neighborhood. I've never been before. And this is what I'm going to do. Like you just land like a nuclear bomb at 10 o'clock in the morning on June 3rd. <laughs> and then I look, I hear, I see her coming, going into my, my vacant lot where I have all my plants and my, um, dandelions growing wildly and all sorts of shit going on and she has this bowl and she's going towards one of my all the way the plant at the very end and she's putting like this little bowl of water in it and I'm like what the fuck <laughs> am I seeing right now and then she walks away and I'm like okay and a couple minutes later here she comes again same bowl same weird walk, you know, like I shouldn't be here doing this kind of walk, tippy toe kind of walk in the middle of fucking broad daylight. Anybody can see you. I don't know why you walk like that. Anywho, back to my plant, more water. And at this point I go, excuse me. And she turns around. Oh, hi. Oh, I didn't know you were home. <coughs> I didn't know you were home. I didn't know anybody was here. I just saw this plant. I don't need, I don't even know who, you know, whose plant it actually is. It just really looks like it needed water. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do anything wrong. Da, 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 da. And I was like, I go, that, I go, that's okay. But I literally wa water my plants like two times a day. It's fine. <laughs> She's like, oh, it just looked really, really thirsty. And I'm like, well, they're dying flowers. It, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a plant of daisies and they grow. They are good. The sun hits them. Water hits them. They live for several weeks and then eventually they die and they're in this process of dying. Like they, you know, like a, a day with like, I'm like, yeah, it's like today or tomorrow. I need to cut them off of the, off of the plant. <laughs> but she sees it and goes, oh my God, this plant is dying. And it's not plant is totally fine and all the plants that's planted with it are totally fine i just watered it um a few hours before 
but it looked a certain way. The perception, I can see that. And so I'm not upset about it. It's just, I'm like, but yeah, it's good. And, and I was like, so are you cleaning up over there? Or she's like, oh, well, I, I'm actually moving in. I'm like, oh, fuck. Okay. I think to myself when she says that, I'm like, oh, awesome. So once, what once was vacant and totally quiet, or even when Chris was there, he was quiet as a mouse. I never heard this guy. The most disturbing thing he did was have lights on at night. <laughs> I mean, seriously. He was fan-fucking-tastic. I love that guy. I loved him. He was so quiet. So quiet. And, um, yeah, so then he leaves. And you know how long it took me? I don't even know how long it took me before I realized he was actually gone. Like, I wasn't paying attention. He's so quiet. He doesn't make any noise. Vibes are good. So I don't really pick up on him very much. And I realize, I'm like, it's been a few days. I haven't seen his lights come on. You know, that sort of thing. And then I'm like, oh, he's just definitely not there. He's just not there. And I, it finally, like, clicked. And then he was just not there for months. And then she shows up all loud like a bomb. That's how I'm going to describe her, the bomb. Um, so the bomb says that she's moving. So she starts to tell me her story through the window. I go, you know what? Let me go out there. So I go out there and we proceed to talk for probably the next 45 minutes. Um, she's telling me how she, okay, I swear to God, I'm not making this up. I swear to God, I'm not making this up. <laughs> she proceeds to tell me that she just moved from one little town higher up on the mountain down here to my town moved in with her boyfriend but that within two weeks he lost his shit I don't she doesn't really say what happened just lost his shit and she needed to leave and so his dad i believe or his uncle owns this place that chris lived in and he said well chris isn't there so you can move in you can stay there and move in there i'm not sure how long she's supposed to be here or what the deal is but she's she makes it sound like it's not long term and then it is long term and it's a little confusing she's like oh i don't want to stay here because my boyfriend's in this town and and i don't want to run into him and blah 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 and i'm like really gonna let that make you move it from a town like all right whatever you know I didn't say that I was just like okay <laughs> whatever I mean I know it's a small town but so what if you see him at the grocery store you know so what get over it <laughs> grow up <laughs> you kind of thing uh but anyway so she says that um and this is where it's a little fuzzy i'm pretty sure this is a new boyfriend and her husband was the one that was in isis that she she was in isis like the isis and i hate that they use that that name for it but it is what it is um yeah that she married a guy like she was in isis for I, sh I don't know how long but a long time it sounds like at least 10 years or something like that um and then she escaped that and then hooked up with this guy i guess but before being in isis she was born into a jehovah's witness um, family and was Je a Jehovah's Witness for however many years 20 years or something who knows um, and she describes both of them as being in cults she's like I went from one cult to another cult and she's like and I finally got out and I've been on my like was on my own and then I met my boyfriend and then he things were fine and then he asked me to move down here and I did and then he lost his shit and I'd had nowhere to go and blah 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 so here I am and it's just kind of chaotic and crazy and you know all this stuff I don't mean to trauma dump on you and I'm like it's all right it's kind of what I do <laughs> it's what I do um 
one of the things I do anyway. And it's, you know, good to know people's stories if they want to tell you. So, and she just moved in. So I want to know what's going on with her. if She wants to tell me. Um, and I did tell her, she asked me almost immediately, what do you do? Because I can sense like something different with you and your vibe is really, you got a really great vibe and blah, blah, blah. I go, oh, well, I'm a spiritual guide and spirit counselor and shaman all the things <laughs> told her and then i can't remember how it came up but somehow it came up about when i was a child psychic and the whole story that happened with that and she just she was just like oh my god i thought i had crazy stories this is the craziest story i've ever heard like oh my god and just like i've never heard anything like this this is amazing this is wild and she was just like totally taken with my story of being this child psychic and what happened and how I stopped and I told her a bit about it. <clears throat> so anyway, um, and she was like, okay, I got to get back and I got to clean, clean the house. There's so much to clean. It's really, really gross, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, I was like, okay. And she's like, and she kept telling me, cause I have my light. I don't know if you've seen, if you have not seen my Instagram, you, this might be difficult to, to understand, but I have these twinkle lights all over my outside yards and grass and on the, on the ground and up in, in my, going all the way up to my oak and, um, in my house, I have twinkle lights as well everywhere. So, but at night it's really, really pretty with all the lights and it's just the white lights. Um, and it's definitely, definitely a thing. Um, and so she just kept talking about them from the beginning. She's like, I love the lights. I love the lights. I've been in here a few times at night. It's so pretty. I love driving by your place and seeing all the lights and how do you have to tell me what it, where you got them and this, that. And she just kept talking about the lights. And as she was leaving, she said it again. Thank you for being so nice. Thank you for being so kind. You've been really sweet listening to me. I hope I didn't trauma dump on you too much. And I'm, you know, really glad you're really nice and blah, blah, blah. And I was, you know, genuinely like, okay, well, if this is who has been brought here to be my neighbor for however long, I am not going to resent it and be resistant and be frustrated that I have to deal with a person and her daughter and her dog and her two cats. <laughs> I'm going to be really open. Like it could be a really great thing. I'm going to, that's how I approach any situation with people like, oh, there's a new person in the environment or, you know, I, let's see what happens with this. Like I'm never negative about it ever. Um, so anyway, she was going to leave. She thanked me for being nice and, and said stuff again about the lights. And I said, oh, and then all of a sudden I just got the guidance, like give her that extra box of lights that I have and have had for like two weeks that I still haven't put up anywhere. Cause I wasn't really sure where I was putting them or, um, I mean, I kind of was, but I kind of wasn't <laughs> and I just haven't done anything with them yet. They've just been sitting there. And I was just guided to get them and give them to her. So I went and I got them. And I and I go, here you go. And please don't say no. Please take them. You're supposed to have them. I want you to have them. And I'm being guided to get to give them to you. And she she goes, oh, my God. And she's like, what is it? I go, those are the lights. And she's like, oh, my God. That's so amazing. Thank you so much. That is so sweet of you. It's so kind. It's so generous. Blah, 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 all the things. All the things. And I was like, you're welcome. I'm glad, you know, to give them to you. And you can just, you know, same lights. You can just continue on your, in your space and, and all that good, good stuff. And, you know, we ended our conversation. It was really nice. It was fine. She continued to be, and I, at one point I did say, you have a really nice voice. She's like, oh, thank you. She's like, I'll definitely be, you know, singing on the porch and playing my guitar. And, and I'm like, okay, well, I'll definitely let you know if, I need you to be quiet if I'm like in a session or <laughs> doing healing or whatever. <laughs> like, I don't know what to say to that when somebody just says, I'm going to be loud. It just, you know, it's like, okay. Um, so anyway, but that was, it was good. And that was, that was the end of that. But then today, day two, same thing music really loud um tv really loud i knew she was watching john mulaney's comedy special i think i know which one it was 
I could hear every word she said all day, either on the phone or with any person she had over. I think she had like two people over and that's the other thing. It's like, so I have to energetically get used to her, her daughter, her dog, and the, her cats and my cats knowing there's new cats here and whatever, you know, that brings. So it really is bomb, 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 you know? And on top of that, you're a loud person. You're going to play music really loud. You're going to sing really loud. You're going to talk really loud. You're going to have your TV on really loud. You're not going to give a fuck who hears you, you know, that type of thing. And I'm sitting here today going, I live here and I work here. I'm here 24 hours a day. I cannot have somebody right next door who's going to be like this all the fucking time or even a little bit of the time. Um... I, I'm really cognizant of my noise and my noise. I always have been because I'm sensitive to that. So, you know, yeah, sometimes I play my, I'm, I'm gardening, I'll play my music and, you know, but I'm the most sensitive, energetic person in, in the neighborhood. And when I do that, most people aren't home. I have no person over there, no person over there. And the person over there is literally deaf. So, you know, I, now that she's there, that's different. But before, you know, and she comes in and is just like everything loud, everything loud, loud on the, on the, on the patio, talking on the phone, loud in her house, talking on the phone, loud with the TV, as loud as it can be loud with the music, like literally the speaker facing outside, um, you know, just loud. I could literally, I knew every move she made all day long. And even when I went, okay, you know what? Like, and I was going to go over there early, earlier, but she had a, somebody over there. And I'm like, I'm not doing this in front of somebody because I, I, I'm not stupid and it's not my, my first rodeo and I'm not going to have a conversation about, about space and volume and energy and, and, and all that shit with her having somebody there. So I'm just going to wait it out. I'm going to go sit in my, in my garden on the other side of where she lives. And hopefully that's enough space to not hear her stuff. And I could still hear her TV. I could still hear her talking and laughing and talk and getting loud at times. Like just like, like just with like loud with no abandon. Like I just don't give a fuck who hears me. Like one of those types of people. Um, and then I'm at one point, like I need to spend some time with my, I have to like kind of rotate where I am during the day so I can spend time with different cats. Cause all, not all the cats go all the places because they just find, they all have their kind of safe zones where they are and the other cats don't encroach upon those spaces and it keeps things nice and copacetic. But that means I've got to move around in different places inside and outside so I can balance out my energy output to my animals as best as I can. <clears throat> so today I went from being in the backyard um, and I also, there, it was windier and cool and just cooler and I wanted to feel the sun. I just have this, like today I had this real, yesterday too, I had this real desire to just feel the sun. So probably gearing up for the Stargate that starts today, by the way. Happy Stargate. Happy 4th of July. Um, so I moved to the front porch where there's a lot more sun and was doing stuff and working there. And it, it, did, it was quiet for a while because she left, but then she came back and it just got loud again. And again, with the, with the music and the singing, just at full fucking volume. Just like full on screaming singing like I cannot tell you like it's how loud it's so loud and I'm just sitting there going oh and then I realized that her friend left and I was like oh this is my chance she's being loud and she's alone and I, I need to deal with this sooner than later because the longer you take to tell somebody that their behavior is a problem or there needs to be adjustments or whatever, the more difficult it is because then they're, they're like, well, I've been doing this already for however long. <clears throat> I've found that to be true. 
a hundred percent like if people move in and their dog is like like I'll give concession like the dog needs to get used to stuff if they're you know left alone they're gonna you know have to and I will deal with it for a couple of weeks but I'll also watch the behavior of the of the dog owner like how much they're trying to not instigate a situation for their dog to just bark incessantly and then I absolutely um will say something um and I've also just been known to call animal control and not even get into it with a person if their dog is just barking and barking and I, they just don't like the people that drive me nuts the most are the people who are home with their dog and their dog is barking incessantly they can actually shut their dog up but they don't I, I had neighbors I have neighbors like that a couple doors down and when they moved in and it was like a month into it and they just let their dog bark 24 7 on and on and on and on like I'm just like who people that do that are those like the type of people that like get off on bothering other people it's more enjoyable to them to to bother other people with whatever it is whatever tool that they have to do it then it bothers them themselves um so I called animal control and it worked the animal control came and said hey your dogs cannot be barking from seven in the morning to 12 o'clock at night on and on and on and on and on or you're gonna have problems so make adjustments or this will it's going to escalate and they made adjustments and they stopped and I never had to talk to them I didn't want to talk to them I didn't know them I never met them they moved in and I they're I just was like, I don't want to know you if this is the type of person you are, to be honest. Like, I just don't even want to talk to you. Um, so, anyway. Um, so, I go over there. I try to, she has like this this fence, but that's away from like her sliding glass door entryway. But she was all the way in the back and her, she's using some loud machine that she's cleaning with or no the music was loud and she was singing that's what it was she couldn't hear me because she was being so fucking loud and I had to like go open the gate and get up there and be like hey cat like scream at her this is how loud she was I had to literally go up into her house and scream at her to get her attention for go oh hey <laughs> with every one of her windows open by the way <clears throat> if that wasn't obvious before and she first thing she says is oh hey am I being too loud <laughs> I'm like yeah yeah you are you're definitely being too loud and she just kind of like her face just changed like oh because my attitude, I guess, wasn't like, oh, no, it's okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're an asshole. And you're totally affecting my fucking environment. But I'm going to apologize for having to come over here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I wasn't like that. I was like, yeah, it's definitely too loud. Like, and I'm giving her this look like, come on, dude. She's like, I'm sorry, but, you know, you have to understand, I'm in a crisis. I am in a crisis. I'm having a life-altering crisis, and I'm trying to make this house so I can bring my daughter here. And I, so if you can just be a little patient with me, and I'm just looking at her going, she's like, I'll turn it down. I was thinking maybe it was too loud, but I'll turn it down. I'll turn it down. I'm not usually like this. And blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh my fucking God. Thinking to myself, oh my fucking God. Why, 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 why? Why? <laughs> and I was like, I go, look, I go, can we just talk? She's like, I'll turn it down. Da, 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 da. Like I was trying to just talk over me and be done with it. And I go, can I just talk to you for a second about, about stuff? <laughs> You know, just because she's like, I haven't even spent the night here once. And I'm like, I know. And it's the perfect time to talk about this so we can have a great living neighborly environment. Don't you think? I'm here right now. Let's just talk. I go, can I, I go, I go, can I just, she's like, okay, what's up then? What's up? I go, I go, you know what? I'm sensing a lot of attitude with you. A lot of attitude. She's like, well, I, I'm not angry. I'm not angry. I'm just, yeah, sure. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. And I'm like, 
You're frustrated. Okay. She's like, I guess you're frustrated too. I go, well, a little bit, but the attitude isn't helping. Like, if we could just talk. I didn't come out. You, I, I didn't get a chance to say diddly dick before she said, am I being too loud? Yes, you are. And then boom, instant bitch mode she turned into. Because I wasn't apologetic at her like she wanted me to be. Because I have nothing to fucking apologize for. She's the one being really inconsiderate. Dropping in like a bomb with her noise and her energy that she doesn't take into consideration whatsoever at all. Clearly. Clearly. And I... And being guided to talk to her about it. And she doesn't want to. She wants to get rid of me. <clears throat> she wants it to end. I go, look, if I can just. And every time I tried to talk, she would interrupt me about six words in. It would trigger something. It would trigger her. And boom, she would be off interrupting me and talking over me every single time. To turning it into something I didn't do, I didn't say, like going off in directions that it did not need to go off on. And she would be like, <clears throat> I'm, I'm trying to make this place, you know, clean. It's disgusting. I'm trying to make this place clean for, for my daughter to move, you know, to come here. And, and so I don't lose custody. Of course, it's got to be that dramatic, right? <laughs> it's got to be that dramatic. Oh, you're going to lose custody. All of a sudden, just like that like that just <laughs> what's going on that you're just about to lose custody in the first place if that's true because I don't understand how that would be like that all of a sudden but whatever whatever and it's not about that and I don't give a fuck it's none of my business um but she she's just talking over me and I was like look if I can just I said something I, she said something about her daughter I go look I go yeah and I go and I think it would be, to have your daughter in a really in a good environment she goes don't tell me how to raise my daughter and I'm like oh my god you're one of these people you're totally gaslighting me you're totally fucking gaslighting I can't even say, so your daughter, like, wouldn't it be good to get along with your neighbor so you're also your daughter can have a nice living environment? Before I can even say a quarter of that, she's telling me that I shouldn't say, tell her how to raise her daughter. I'm like, oh my God. I even threw my head back. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Really? Like, come on. I'm like, you know what? I'm not, okay, fine. Like, I'm just like, you're just, like, right then I'm like, she's impossible. She's impossible. This is going to be fucking impossible. <laughs> like, when you recognize the, the communication with a person because of their fucking bullshit that they've got attached to them and whatever Jehovah's Witness Isis and crazy shit she's been through has turned her into what she is I can't even get a word out and she's the type of person that's going to move in and act like this to begin with and then she starts coming at me when I she, she's the one who brought up her daughter not me and then when I make a comment about it she tells me not to not to talk about her daughter I'm like are you fucking kidding me really this is what you're trying with me I'm like look I'm like, I live and I work here. So do I. I'm going to work here too. I'm like, oh my God. And I, I just need to get through this. I just need to clean this place. Okay, fine, fine. I just need, and I'm like, again, talking over me. I'm like, oh my God, if I could just, she goes, and I don't have time for this. I go, well, if you could just let me talk and finish what I need to say without you interrupting me, that would be fantastic because this keeps getting side sidetracked hijacked and sidetracked 
So if I could just do my thing, fine, do it. Talk. Like, so fucking rude. So fucking rude. So fucking rude. Like, you're just like, oh, you're just a little fucking monster bitch. This is what you are. Okay. And I said something like, first, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm still trying. I go, first, I'm going to say, <clears throat> I'm happy that you're here. And she gave me this look like, fuck you, bitch. Like, so evil. And I just, like, took that in and I went, huh, all righty. Noted. She was because at that moment, she could have been like, you know what? I'm really glad to be here, too. Like, she could have said some, like, she, but instead, she gives me this look like, no. Uh-uh. Like, just not having it at all. And I go, and I said, and I said, here, I said, and here's the thing. I said, and I, I go, I am really, um, I go, I'm really sensitive to environments and she goes and then again interrupts me about the noise and I'm not that loud and da 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 and I don't know like, I listen to podcasts and I want to like on her I'm just like oh my god again she interrupts me <laughs> like it's so exhausting it's so exhausting because you get gaslit you get hijacked you get twister like off on and, and it just and then they look at you and go i don't have time for this and you're just like what she so at some point she goes she's says, you know what i just want you to leave i just want you to leave my house you know if we can just deal with this in two days and i'm like so what's gonna i'm like i'm here now can we just do this can we just handle this now so we can just be done you know i go can you give me five minutes oh no first i said First, I said, um, I go, look, there was this piece. I said, I, I said, I go, look, I go, I'm very sensitive to energy, not just volume of stuff, just energy in general. And I said, uh, and I go and, and I go, and I will tell you that I am going to be leaving here sooner than later. She goes, well, I was going to say, like, you should. Like, why why live in a place like this if it's so hard to be around people, you know? You know, you're just, you know, because I, I said something like, and then I said something like, um, I go, I'm practically, like, disabled with it. Like, I wanted to bring it to her understanding on a, like, it's, like, really intense what I feel. Because the next things I was going to say was, you know, when somebody moves in, I've got to acclimate to their energy. It's a real thing that I've got to get used to. And you're already in distress. You're already in your trauma. So I'm processing you in trauma. Self-diagnosed, I'm going through a, a traumatic experience right now. So I've got to tr process you and your trauma and your animals, and your daughter's trauma. So if you can understand from an energetic point of view, just you come, even if everything was hunky fucking dory with you in your life, I still have to go, whoa, here's all these waves and big bombs of energy and everything that they come with and everything that they're attached to. And I've got to now get used to that. And of course, that's my problem. I'm not going to come over there and go, hey, you're over here with your energy invading my world. No, it's for me to, to deal with. But when you're an obnoxiously loud person with the volume of your voice, with the volume of your music, with the volume of your television, you're then adding on to what you already bring in. And it's too fucking much. Okay? It's too much. You know I'm here all day. You know I work here. You know what I do for a living. We talked about it yesterday. Yet you don't give one iota of a fuck. And she proceeds to tell me that. 
I go and then I go look and then I and I start to say this thing about being really sensitive and she was like well I should think so you should just move because you know why should you I go look I go now you're telling me how to do my life I go look I go as you know you don't always land where you plan on okay you don't know what happened to me getting here you don't know my story you don't know my trauma and the shit that I've been through and it's been a lot okay and now you're here so if we can just back it up and she's just looking at me like oh shit because I don't give a flying fuck who you are It's not going, you're not, your wave of bullshit will never, ever, ever knock me down and take me out and confuse me and take over and be better than me and stronger than me. It will never, ever, ever fucking happen no matter what you do. I don't give a fuck who you are. It just isn't going to happen. And in this exchange, she's recognizing that. Because from the very beginning, I was as stable and as solid and as empowered and as in control as a person could possibly be. She was the one who was completely out of control, completely domineering, completely obnoxious, completely rude the entire time. And she interrupts me yet again. And then I say, you know, and then I go, look, I go, if we can just go back and if I can have now, I go, if I could just have five minutes, like she was, cause she was like, and I gotta go and I don't have time for this. Cause she interrupted me again. She got interrupts me, gaslights me. I stand up for myself. Then she has to go. I gotta go. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for this. I got to clean. I got to get this place ready for my daughter and blah, 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 blah. Because, you know, I have custody and this and that and all this fucking drama and bullshit. And I'm just standing there looking at her. I go, okay. I go, but if I can have five minutes so I can get out what I came here to say to you so you can understand where I'm coming from and then do with it what you will. No, you can't have five minutes. She says to me. No. I look at her, and it literally probably wouldn't have even taken five minutes. But she says, no. No, I don't have five minutes. No, you don't get five minutes. No, I'm too busy. And I don't care. I And no, and I go, I go okay, fine, then I'll be quick about it. But I'm going to tell you what I'm, I go, I could hear everything you were saying today with your friends. Everything. And she looks at me and she goes, I don't care. And I'm like, it's not just when you were outside. It's when you're inside. I could hear everything that was going on in here. Everything you were saying. Everything you were watching. Everything you were listening to. Everything. She's like, fine. So Sam carries. So what? I don't care if any, she was like, so you heard me talking about my friends and my life? I go, she was like, I don't care. And that's when I looked at her, like, I go, see, that's the problem, that you don't care. You should care. If you're so loud that everybody can hear you that's around you. And how that might, might have, how, may, how might they not want to hear you it's not just about you not caring if anybody hears what you're saying it's the fact that you don't care that they may not want to that you're polluting the environment with your fucking noise and your life and your energy coming in going in all directions when before you were here none of that existed that should matter to you you know like And she's like, and I don't care, I don't care, and I shouldn't have to worry about it with you, and da 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 and just starts going off. I go, you know what? I am. I'm done. You are so, so rude. You are beyond rude. Well, you're the one who came up here, and you're the one who said, I go, okay. 
I go, you're unbelievable. You're, I go, you are, I was done. At that point, I was, I was like, I am so fucking done. I go, I'm done. We're done here. I tried. I tried, but you're beyond fucking rude. You're beyond. And I turned around and start walking. And she's following me, yelling at me. What? Am I loud? If I'm loud, then I'll be quiet. Then I'll be quiet. Screaming at me. Screaming at me how she'll be quiet. Tell her she's loud and she'll be quiet. And I'm like you're all shades of fucking crazy and rude and obnoxious and narcissistic and fucking damaged (laughs) and i'm just walking home and at that moment or right as where this is happening her next door neighbor we'll call him 31 31 is out by his car of course Of course, right outside. And she starts talking with him. Am I loud? Have I been loud? And I already know that she's been fucking loud. He and I have already talked about it because he stopped his car when I was out here yesterday. And he goes, so, looks like we got a new neighbor. And his look on his face was like, yay. He's like, so we'll see how that goes. I go, yeah. I go, yeah. Hopefully she'll tone it down a little bit. (laughs) And that was after the first day, after yesterday. Like I said, she landed like a bomb at 10 o'clock on a fucking Sunday. Super loud with her music. Super loud with her voice. Super loud with everything she was fucking doing. And everybody, you know, anywhere. I mean, he's even closer to her than I am. He's even fucking closer than I am. By a lot. Because I have this space in between us. There's supposed to be another person there. An RV or a trailer or something. (laughs) But it's just vacant. But he's literally like five feet from her. I can look through her window and see into his house. Easily. (laughs) And I'm like, yeah, he's got to be fucking loving it. Loving it. But he's the type of person most likely to never say anything. Um, and he also leaves at like 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock every day and doesn't come home till like six or seven. So he doesn't have to endure her all fucking day long, you know, and knowing that she also works from home, she does OnlyFans and she's made over $160,000 last year. Um, putting on a show, her, you know, one woman show, which is I don't judge. Fine. Do your thing. Great. But knowing that she works from home and is home and probably plays music on her shows for OnlyFans or whatever the fuck she does. I don't know. She didn't get into it. I didn't ask. Um, She talked a lot about TikTok and having 90,000, 100,000 followers on TikTok. And I should be on TikTok. I don't want to be on TikTok. I want nothing to do with TikTok um, at all. I tried. I went on there and it's just definitely not for me. Just def- If there was somebody else managing my account and there was like content going on there, fine. I would be on TikTok. But to actively be on TikTok, no way, Jose. No fucking way. Oy. So anyway, um, she just continues to talk to, to 31 as I'm walking home. She stopped calling after me. And I stopped telling her how fucking rude she was. And she starts talking to him. Well, she comes over here and... And I, at, at a certain point, I could, I, I could not hear exactly what she was saying. But I just heard their voices. And I go back out on my patio. And I'm like, so you can't talk to me for five minutes. Yet you're going on and on to him about me. Lovely. And I screamed that. Like, I just screamed it. So you can't talk to me for five minutes, but you can complain to him about me. Okay. Lovely. You're a fucking asshole. Because the way she was at me was so aggressive, so rude, so nasty, so volatile, so negative, so toxic, so dysfunctional, so out of line. And I've dealt with that with her with a with 25 and about my next door neighbor through my landlord you know it's like 
I already made the decision after the first thing. Like, yep, we're going to open up for leaving this fucking place ASAP. Whatever that means, however that plays out. How, and I don't know where I'm going. I don't know. I'm definitely not looking for another place in this town. Like, it is time to move the fuck on for sure. <laughs> for sure. I didn't think it was going to be this soon, but yeah, I'm thinking about it. And I can go anywhere. I could go anywhere. Um, as long as I, you know, have my animals, I don't need to be here. Um, that's a logistical nightmare thinking about me with my pets. Um, because I never intended to have so many cats. But I rescued them from people abandoning them or them running away. And they found themselves t t with me. And I've taken them in and they're, now they're my cats. Along with the cats I already had. So that's like the most complicated thing. But as long as I have internet, I can go anywhere. I can literally go. I can literally go anywhere. Um, so I have a lot of thinking to do about that. Because it, it's just a, I mean, it's almost like saying, well, I guess I'm not going to work now. <laughs> you know, I guess I'm not going to do all the things I, I, I was going to do and all, you know, like, I don't know. It's just like my first rad because it's just so much to deal with when it comes to even finding a place, looking at places. It's like a full-time job practically and then packing and moving and all the logistics and just the, all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it. And I literally don't have like anybody to help me. So it's just a lot, but it's clear that staying here is not something that I'm going to be able to do for very long, very much longer, I should say. Just energetically, like I said earlier, like I'm the odd man out, like I'm the thing that doesn't fit here anymore regardless of my best attempts put up a wall get up you know rent the space next to me um try to communicate and try to be either stay to myself or or be very nice to my neighbors i'm always as nice as i can possibly be i'm never rude i'm never standoffish i'm always friendly and um but that doesn't matter <laughs> Um, because the people that are closest to me and now we've got um oh I guess she would be well we're calling her the bomb the bomb is now here with her fucking loudness and her rudeness and she has a child too which I have not met yet and typically I really like child I'm not going to disparage a child I've never met but it's another thing that I'm and even just that little like just her, you know just trying to say wouldn't you like a really nice, cohesive, happy environment for your daughter? Like before I could get that out and I was like, she was down my throat about don't tell her how to raise her daughter. So um, she's, I don't want anything to do with her. Like I have a very short fuse and I'm very, very much like I will not give you any space to come at me or be an effect effectually in like to, to to engage with you <laughs> I can't even get it out to engage with you like I am never going to engage with her um I'll ignore her I'll pretend like she doesn't exist and that'll be that um I do the same thing with Apollo number 25 I do the same thing with the other one because what am I supposed to do how how else am I supposed to be I try to avoid you know crossing like if he's out there I don't go out there if he's out there unless I really need to if I'm already out there I'm not going to run in because he came outside you know I'm just going to be do my thing um but yeah <laughs> um so I've got a lot to think about, but this is just, you know, one of these things that was I was thinking about um, when it comes to 
things coming in threes usually to give us really intense messages. Like I said, I'd already decided that after the first time. Like, I'm not dealing with this anymore. Like, I'm done. Like, it's really clear that he's still got so much displaced anger toward, and it's at towards me. Um, and then this new one with a guy with Mr. Skunk thinking that it's putting it off on me that his dog got skunked. I'm like, did I pick up a skunk and aim its ass at your dog and completely forget all about that? <laughs> I think I would remember an event like that. <laughs> I definitely would have pointed it at you and not your dog. Given the chance. <laughs> oh my god. And then this bitch just not having any kind of copus like just like i'm in crisis mode that takes precedence over everything like really and then just being such an asshole just such an like the other one called me i wasn't being an asshole i just said i'm not putting my dishes away for my cats like it's not happening that was the extent of what I said. You're an asshole. I'm like, all right, well, I suppose everybody in the world's an asshole that doesn't give you what you want because you've had a, a thing happen to you and now everybody around you needs to make adjustments. <laughs> like, that's basically what he said. I had an event. I had a traumatic event and you need to make adjustments <laughs> so I can be less mad about it. Something was done. So it's like when something happens in your life and you just need to blame somebody because you're so fucking pissed that it happened. That's what happened there. And I'm the thing. I'm the thing for him. And got and never, ever, ever in a million, million years, dinosaurs could come back again and have another extinction event again before he would go, you know what? Maybe I was out of line there. Huh. Maybe I should apologize. Uh-uh. 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 I would have a pet dinosaur before that happened. Same thing with this lady. Same thing. Never in a million years will she go, you know what? Maybe I was a bit aggressive. Maybe I shouldn't have had my shit as loud as it was to begin with. Because clearly she thought so since it was the first thing she said to me. Was this too loud? Am I being loud? Yeah. You're being fucking loud really fucking loud man i didn't say it with the f-bomb but i was like yeah <laughs> you're being loud uh-huh <laughs> do you not know how sound works <laughs> uh, yeah the fact that i have got to make my presence and put my put myself in front of you for that to really be known to you is troubling really fucking troubling especially since you just fucking got here like i think that's like always the, the hardest thing it's like not only are you obnoxious you're obnoxious from the moment you arrive you're out of line overstepping your boundaries from the moment you arrive and you know it And to the point of knowing that that's why you're, I'm looking at you while you're looking at me at my, at your doorstep unannounced. Um, yeah, you're a bitch about it. A fucking bitch, rude, obnoxious fucking bitch. That's the best I've got. So rude, so rude, so obnoxious. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So the other thing I wanted to say about that was, um, you know, when it comes to confrontation, you know, I was, I'm like, do I want to go over there and tell her that she's loud? No. But if I don't go do it, nobody else will. And because it affects me the most, it's on me to go say something. And I was prepared to be as kind and, and, and gentle about it and explain more about me and what I have to process now that she's here 
and not just her but her daughter and her animals and in the crisis mode that they're in which is a lot and also the volume on top of that you know so and that I do work here and not only that I I don't just you know work here doing whatever bullshit job I I am a spiritualist I do spiritual job I you know I it's I don't know just to me it would be kind of like oh I just found out that my neighbor does energy work and she's a healer and she's a psychic and she works from home maybe I should not be so loud huh nope guess not guess not uh so when it comes to confrontation um you know I do try to avoid it but if I'm guided that I do need to do it, I will. And I also will not be manipulated. I will not be um, um, disrespected. I will not be a punching bag. I will not take somebody's shit just because they have issues on different levels and because I am what I am that's just what kind of what ends up happening a lot of the time but I people find out really soon he found out very soon the the guy with the skunk like you're not going to intimidate me you're just not just because you're this guy coming at me you're trying to you're totally misogynistic trying to intimidate me with your size with your stature with your attitude with the way you're looking down at me with your body language with your with your verbiage with your tone with your energy with your threats with your name calling and I'm just sitting there looking at him like none of it is going to stick literally it's annoying and it's frustrating that I have to deal with you but you're not going to ch to affect me to change me you know like and when I felt myself getting heated when he was talking about the the cats and going indoor and he's gonna start lecturing me I was like oh I yeah it's definitely time to go goodbye and the same thing happened with her today. Like she starts, I don't care if I'm, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what people, I don't care. I was like, oh, you're fucking obnoxious as hell. You're literally screaming at me how you don't care how you affect people around you. How I'm saying, can you please be sensitive? She's going, I need you to be sensitive. I'm in a crisis. And I'm like, I'm not in a crisis and this is my home and my environment that you just invaded and I'm just saying could you be sensitive to me it's not all about you and you know what's really funny you probably can't hear it but where where 25 skunk man does live he's been gone now for like a, a week maybe something like that five days or a week and this guy showed up on saturday i have no idea who he is i've never seen him before he's just there now by himself skunk man isn't there with him he's just there he's waved and said hi but we have not talked and he's also loud <laughs> guitar singing just loud no no like actual like music from a speaker like she had going on and then screaming loud on top of that all day long or the tv or her talking to her friends but he's also not quiet so these two people in the last um since saturday today's monday these two people showed up in my in my environment right next right in front of me and right across from me and right next to me in my environment both of them music singing loud or talking on the phone loud or just yeah yeah loud presence overall and he's doing it right now he's like sitting out there singing he has a nice voice. I don't know what he's saying. Um, and 
I really don't know, like, what the protocol is for that. It's like... Like, I think that's okay here and there sometimes to be, you know, loud with music or singing or talking or whatever. But not consistently all the time, you know? And... And I get it. She just moved in. I get it. She She's like, I'm just trying to clean this place and I'm using music and I'm saying it. Like, I'm not telling you not to do those. Like, that's the thing. It's like she was so angry and so defensive from the very beginning. And I just wanted to just go, look, I just want you to understand that I don't think that you're like, I would think that you would think that that music is loud and that you're singing loud and that that's loud because it is. Like, how do you not know? How can you not tell volume? Like, you know what I mean? I don't understand that. And it, like, that's weird to me. And she clearly did because she knew. She was just really pissed because I was saying something about it. And I was like, you know, when she's like acting like I get to do this because of the situation I'm in, I'm like, no, you don't. I don't know wh why you think that. Because you're in a crisis mode, I have to endure your fucking crisis and, and how you cope with yourself. Why should I have to endure that? You know? Like, have music on and sing, but do it at a volume that isn't, like, taking, like, I can't fucking think to write my article, because your music and your screaming loud sound songs are taking over the entire, like, I can't even think. Like, if you were my own stereo, I would shut you off, so I could do my work. Why should I endure you because you are in crisis? That's so fucking narcissistic. And I'm not going to let you just do it without you, without me calling you on it. And no, you don't get a pass. You don't get to be a bomb and a bomb and a bomb and a bomb and a bomb for how many days you need to be a fucking bomb. And I'm just supposed to take the fucking shrapnel day after day after day and keep my mouth shut. Because that's, what, the polite thing to do? Because we have neighbors, and if you want to be as loud as you want to be, I just have to keep my mouth shut? No. No. <laughs> like, no. And if you're a fucking asshole about it, that makes it even doubly worse. So when it comes to confrontation, again, it's like, no, it's not fun to have to deal with it. But then if you have to deal with it, don't let yourself be taken for a ride, manipulated, gaslighted, you know, like made to try to made to feel like you're the like I'm the like, that's it. Like I'm the one who did something wrong. Just don't just don't take it. Maybe I, no, I don't know. I don't have any regrets. I feel like I, 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 I maintained my dignity, who I am, my authenticity. But once it got to a point that she literally was saying, I don't care about you and what you hear and what you like and what you don't like and what feel, feels good and what doesn't feel good it doesn't matter to me I'm like all right then we're done here goodbye I'm not going to go back and forth and on and on and on about it especially when you literally say to me I don't have five minutes for you my new neighbor no new neighbor I don't have five minutes for you fuck off get out of my house I can understand if I showed up just screaming and yelling and going off and going crazy. Sure. Tell me to fuck off every day you see me. I get it. No problem. But when I show up and I don't even have to say a word and you're the one going, am I being too loud? And I just say, yes, you are. And your little, I'm in crisis mode. Can you just be patient for a few days and just let me be as loud as I... 
I have a life. I have work to do. I have clients. No, you don't just get to be over there being as loud as you want because you've got to clean a place to move into it. Not my fucking problem. I mean, seriously. And I'm just supposed to go, okay, sorry. Have your crisis. I'm so sorry. Bye-bye. And feel bad about it. Fuck no. That's what she wanted. And that's what I'm trying to get at. When you know unequivocally it's it's your right to speak up to create a boundary. And let this be a lesson if you're still with me off with almost two hours. <laughs> that when there needs to be a boundary, create that boundary. And if other people don't respect it, then we have issues. Then you have to deal with it. But A, don't be mad when somebody's encroaching on your space and you just sit there stewing about without doing anything. Say, you know, like, yeah, I know you just got here. That's the whole point. You just got here. So let's create some understanding here before it continues. I don't like that kind of shit. I like to nip shit in the butt ASAP. ASAP. Why waste time? Why not address stuff? And that's how I'm guided to deal with stuff. Get to it. Don't avoid it. Don't deny it. Let's, you know, if there's a problem, let's address it. Or I'm not talking to you at all about anything because you're, whatever it is, is a matter in my everyday life. If that's the case, then maybe I won't address it and deal with it because there's nothing to deal with. I just won't deal with you, period, you know? But if we have a situation like it's my next door neighbor and she doesn't for herself know what's appropriate, I've got to tell her what is appropriate and not let her bully me with her crises sorry you don't get to you don't you don't get to bully anybody because you're having a moment in time that's not okay that's highly toxic highly dysfunctional that's not being in control that's being unstable and i get and i get that but you should but if you're going to be like that and come at me with that it's only my fault if i accept it if i take and i chew and swallow what you're what you're trying to dish out to me and that was the problem and that's what made her so mad and that's what make every narcissist so mad is when you go uh uh-uh, uh and you shove that plate right back at them and go you eat your shit i'm not eating your shit then they get pissed Because that was your shit. They created that shit for you to eat. So they can then feed off of the shit you produce from their shit. It's not so much fun when it's just their shit and they're eating their own shit. They need you to eat their shit. So then then you can then secrete more shit. And that's the shit that they love to be in. Pigs and shit. Fucking narcissists. That's how they are. So I just slid that plate right back at her and I said, nope, I'm not taking your shit. I'm not eating your shit. Eat your own shit and keep it on your fucking plate. I don't want it. Okay. And I'm just telling you, I'm an extra sensitive person to shit and I can also smell it a mile away. So if you could wrap your shit up nicely, nice and tight, like airtight, maybe, some of the time so i don't have to smell your shit that would be great because guess what it's not my fucking shit to smell and that's what you got to do however way however way it needs to come And literally, I was over there probably all of, not even five minutes, really, truly, maybe three minutes. Like, again, it happened really fast because she was a lot very quickly (laughs) over and over and over and over and over again. So... (laughs) really it's about boundaries it's about standing your ground not letting somebody play you not letting somebody use you for their bullshit 
negative energy toxicity that they need in their life because they're seeing an opportunity to cook up some shit you know don't don't play the game don't let somebody turn you into another thing you have you're able to, to do that and sure you know like after this happened I got yeah irritated but just mostly frustrated that it's like great this is what I have to deal with this is I'm just I'm it's just frustrating to me that it's like having a I don't know it's like some kind of um you know it's it, it's an inconvenience to deal with like a like a leaky pipe or a clogged toilet something like that now I have to deal with this thing it couldn't just be easy it couldn't just be okay normal it had to be fucking retarded from the beginning and that's what frustrates me that's what really frustrates me if we're really getting at it it's like really really how many of these experiences do i need to be like yeah i really don't want to be here anymore <laughs> like i said to her like i'm not gonna be here much longer and her fucking response like yeah i would think so like why should you why would you even live here da -da 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 -da. i'm like i can't even say like this tiniest thing about your you know having your daughter have a nice you know, before you're down my throat and you're coming at me with where i should live and why i moved here and why i'm here i'm like are you like, you're a piece of work, lady. Oh, my God. Wow. I'm like, you know what? Now you're encroaching on my life and commenting on my life and my decisions and my story. All I said was, I'll be leaving here sooner than later. And she just created a whole thing just to more shit on me more shit it's really your fault lady for living here i mean come on let's face it you're the one with the problem it's not me and my stereo and my fucking screaming it's you <laughs> talk about gaslighting if you want an example of what gaslighting is there you go there you go that's it right there that's it right there and again it's either tolerate it and not say anything confront the situation and hope for the best but when a person starts gaslighting you and attacking you and being a complete fucking asshole to you and literally i don't have time for you and you know all the things that's when to go yeah got it goodbye we're done we're done you're fucking rude tell them who they are i go you're extremely rude you are so rude so rude from top to bottom left to right and everything in between you are unbelievably rude and we're done here do whatever the fuck you're gonna do you know like stand there and complain to the other neighbor that you've been loud to right next to you have i been loud <laughs> The fact that she's still asking the question is insane. Like she needs him to verify. Right? And she expected me to stop and turn around and get into a three-way thing. I know she did. She was baiting me for it. I'm not stupid. That's the other thing too. Do not let people drag you into more shit with more people. Ever walk away walk the fuck away because i could have stood there and been like don't you think she's been loud because then he'd be like oh oh and she'd be and it would just been a be a bunch of fucking bullshit just and that's what she wanted and instead i just march myself right home i go nope we're done we're done. You're not going to last on me in here. You're not going to bring anybody else. You're, it, it's all you, bitch. It is all you. 100% you. 
you do not get to drive my ship. You do not get to manipulate me. You just do not. And that was it with her. That, that, that was it, literally. Um, so yeah, you know, sometimes we have these situations in life, no matter what we do, that the road narrows and narrows and narrows and narrows to a point where it says things have got to, ch we need to make things so uncomfortable for you that you are forced to change your circumstances. And that's exactly what happened here over the last couple of weeks. And I absolutely am not <laughs> lost on that. It's just been really fucking intense, you know. But that's just how it goes. When these ma major changes need to happen, it does get intense. It does get loud. It does get uncomfortable. It does get tension filled. It does get frustrating and irritating and all the things. All the things. Because if it wasn't that way, you would be like, oh, it's fine. I'll just stay here. It's not so bad. I'm, you know, it's good enough. Could be worse. I can I can take this a while longer. I wish I had this or that. I wish it wasn't like this or that. I wish it was more like like this or that. And I wish I had that or this. And I wish it wasn't like this or that. But it's okay. I mean, I am extremely highly adaptable. And I always have been. And it's also been a problem. And I know that. I know I know that. I can take a lot of a lot of shit. I can I can take a lot of inconvenience. I can take a lot of adjustment. I can go without a lot. I can I can live without a lot. I can lose a lot. I can I can adjust to a lot. And I always have been able to to be that way. But it can also be detrimental because you don't make those hard shifts and changes because it's, it's so difficult. You know, it's so much to deal with and contend with. Whatever that change is, whether it's moving, which as we know is one of the most stressful things in, in a person's life. Moving, changing jobs, breaking up with somebody, separating from your marriage any anything any of those big big things obviously all of those um definitely come for us in in ways that are really intense and it's because if they weren't we wouldn't make the changes that we need to make and it's just that simple if it was super comfortable here with all my neighbors all the time and I, you know, I would, why would I move? Why would I leave? Why would I consider, why would I, yeah, why would I? So things have to force me to think like that to go this is really uncomfortable and just growing more and more and more uncomfortable as time goes on because of the people around because of the circumstances because of the energy here and there's even more than I've talked about believe it or not that I didn't even get into that adds also adds to it by a lot as well so it's been a, a lot and it's just there's just never a good time for it but I felt like I was just like getting into the mode of being really productive or feeling like I'm, I'm you know and I have to be no matter what I mean I think I might just have to just let these energies do their thing let things transpire because I feel like things are going to naturally develop to with more questions to answers or sorry answers to questions and I just have to you know continue 
doing what I'm doing as best as I can, regardless of the people and the energy around me and just try to, you know, not, um, I don't know, react or whatever. I don't, I don't know. Not, not let it take over the things that I need to do or push me out of the things that I need to do or whatever you know like stuff like that it's like that's the other thing it's like chaos can breed distraction so easily they almost are some synonymous right if you have chaos you have you're gonna have distraction and when you have distraction you have imbalance and you have a fucked up flow and you get stress and anxiety and things get tension filled and you have a lot of friction within you you see how this is a chain reaction and it just goes on and on and on so the distraction is the real problem not the chaos itself the chaos is the there's a purpose and a reason for the chaos and we have to see around the outer edges of the chaos to go why is this chaos here what is this about what is it trying to affect what is it invoking in me how am i wanting to naturally deal with this what are what's the energies that are coming what are the messages that i'm getting what is this you know the the feelings of yeah that that's true kind of stuff you know because if you get too wrapped up in the chaos itself, then you get distracted. Then you're just distracted. You're in a you're in like a time warpy loop thing of distraction of, of it being out of things being out of balance and out of alignment and all the other all the other things. So once again in my life i i have learned from these experience these types of experiences and i've talked about on my podcast i've talked about on my youtube i know i've written about it when it comes to chaos and distraction it's a definite theme it's like um you know boundaries crossed um um a fiery experience with a person or or whatever chaos ensues and then the distraction takes place and that happens when almost when we're mostly like when we're really leveling up because it's like that's the gate that's the test how are you gonna it's like the you know if you play video games or if you've ever played a game any kind of game it's like the last le- the last boss or the last monster the last you know challenge that you have to deal with on a level is always the hardest it's always the hardest why 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 is that to test your skills to test your um your ability to maneuver around this challenge the harder the hardest challenge that you've had thus far on this level so yeah how how are you going to do that and can you can you get through where are you going to land once you get through what's what's you know what's going to be on the other side of that it's always like that and there is absolutely something to be said for when we level up when we rise when we when we transcend ourselves when we heal when we clear when we acknowledge when we when we um when we do the things that we need to do to get more solid within ourselves it's like everything around us feels that vibration and goes how do we match with that and that then the environment goes comes back with it with the energy for you to feel and goes we don't match with that you've outgrown the environment and everything in the environment so you don't match with that anymore but here's the kicker are you going to slide down into a frequency where you will match it so it makes sense that you stay 
or do you keep rising past even the the toughest parts of it and transcending it and and prevail through the tension and and the the violence and hostility energetically because it really is a test do you have the strength and the fortitude to move on to change your world and your environment and the players in it because that takes a lot of energy and faith in the process of where you're going next or do you get wrapped up in the chaos and do you get distracted by the chaos and and fall into the chasm of bullshit that's going to end up driving pulling you back down into a frequency where you will stay right where you're at because we need to know that you're strong enough for the next level and the only way to be strong enough for the next level is to effectually leave this one and there is the paradox where many a time and many of us get stuck and do not continue do not you know pass this level stay there and that's fine nobody is judging nobody is judging it is what it is or it isn't what it is whatever it is it is <laughs> you know it's just the way it is it's it's universal law it's the way it works on the tree of life are you gonna hoist yourself up from this branch to the to, to the next branch and be a level higher and be on those timelines with that next branch and everything and all the other branches that it has connected to it can you lift yourself up to that next branch can you leave all this bullshit behind and not let it take you down not let it uh distract you from the you know the the target which is continual ascension and not being dragged into negative chaos and bullshit can you How well can you maintain your frequency and your logic and your way of thinking and your way of processing and your way of perceiving to change or not to change and to stay where you're at and justify it in some way? Because nobody is going to do it for us. And if they did, it would be a bad thing because we then would be in places we don't belong. And then that's even worse because everything is out of whack then. You, you need to really need, you know, belong in, in a place. Whether, you know, or not with a person or not at that job or whatever that it is that you're, where your energy is connected to you most of the time. And these challenges come up to make you figure that shit out. Like literally, and sometimes it can happen really abruptly, really, really abruptly. And, um, you know, little, little things can cause big things. And then you, and then we have a whole other set of circumstances to look at that you didn't see coming because it wasn't like, you know, a tsunami coming. You're like, oh, here's the tsunami. It's going to cause this big up people. We can see it coming from a mile away. Sometimes it's just like subtle and next thing you know there's all this energy all this chaos all this you know like what just happened what is going on <laughs> what you know like before a couple weeks ago I was like yeah you know I definitely need to move on from here at some point sooner than later but it's not like I'm in a rush and that's going to be my, my priority right now. Like that's where my station was. You know, yes, I've outgrown this place in different ways. I do want it to be different. I want it to be more functional. I want to have more space for me to, to do the, all the different things that I do comfortably. And I don't have that here. And the few adjustments that I've made, it's helped, but haven't been great. And I'm always trying to adjust, but it's not just on, you know, I can make it, like I said, I'm a very adaptable person and I can make those adjustments for myself. But when the outside environment is also really uncomfortable, it's like, well, this is just, there's no, there's literally nowhere to be here without it being uncomfortable. It's just uncomfortable no matter what. And, and the energy, my body, everything is, you know, start saying that, like, this is a problem. <laughs> so 
I'm sharing all this and I and I think I definitely will post this publish it because you know these are the types that you know yes these situations and I hope that they were I hope I entertained you I hope I made you laugh with my sarcasm and my dry humor and my um <laughs> way of looking and dealing and being in the shit for you but I hope that that you can see how I process how I deal with it how I see it why I see it the way I see it um what I'm doing about it how I think about it what it's all connected to on a spiritual level because it all goes back to that please remember for yourself no matter what in your life is happening it is happening to you on a spiritual level first it doesn't seem that way a lot of time it doesn't feel that way because not everything has that like flavor to it for us to go oh this is a spiritual experience i'm having this is gonna change my life forever oh my god you know it doesn't always <laughs> wrap itself like that sometimes it's just a shit sandwich and and we're just like what the fuck pulling you know literally like got slapped in the face with a shit sandwich and the shit is like in on your face and in your eyes and you're just like i cannot even see right now what the fuck is going on that is a spiritual experience that is a spiritual experience because it will do something to you on a spiritual level on an energetic level for you to see who you really are who you really are how you process what you do what you don't do how you all the things and it, again those things those things especially happen like of course this happened today on the fourth like of course it did this is when the shit happens this is when it's this it's it's hey, hey, hey. oh wait it's not the stargate i'm thinking the fourth I'm doubling on the 4th for some reason, not the 7th. It's the 7th is the Stargate. Yeah, we're not even in the Stargate. Holy shit. But this is the kind of thing that happens. It's like these these eruptions, these ways we get uncomfortable and deal with other things or people or experiences and, and happenings in the world and the, on the micro or the macro level being uncomfortable um, to collapse, solidify, and create timelines. Sometimes they are dramatic. Sometimes it does come with chaos and friction and trauma and all the shit in the form of a new neighbor. You know, just bleh, bomb, 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 bomb. Awesome. <laughs> but here's the thing. As long as we continue to see the humor and stuff let ourselves process acknowledge it it's a i mean it's impossible to go through life without getting affected <laughs> we're not meant to we're meant to be affected and we're meant to affect that's how shit moves around that's physics if if things didn't get moved and affected nothing would change nothing would change so, so we need to go through life being affected, but we also need to, to see how we are af being affected and then make those choices for ourselves as to how we're going to um, um, deal or control or whatever in, in the effect. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to be all of those things how you handle it how you process it how you acknowledge it how you move on from it how you let go how you cut cords how you heal how you clear how you stabilize yourself how you move forward how you make decisions how you acknowledge how you how all the things all the things that that's what matters that is what matters so the bomb over here she's just a tool if I really want to break it down, you know, like really x-ray it. <laughs> okay. She is just a tool that was put in my environment to move things in certain directions for me. And whatever I was to her 
in that same way. However, she deals with that for herself is her business. But on my side, I have to see that for what it is and, you know, take a step back from it and, and acknowledge it on different levels so I can process it and release it and, and use it to my advantage, not let it use me for negative energy to be put out into the collective in any way shape or form so this is also why I'm guided to like record and talk about all this because I turn these experiences that can be construed as definitely negative no fun indeed nobody's buying a ticket to these rides <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure but that's also if I choose to see it that way that's the illusion all negative all negative that's the illusion negative 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 it's like nope I'm I'm going to decide and this is what happened like after the first thing was like I'm not going to let somebody's evil ways and energy and influences do what it's trying so hard to do I'm going to use that to my advantage again and again and again and again because that's who I am and what I meant to do. If you point a gun at me, I'm going to snatch it from you. I'm not going to let you use it on me and then get blood all over everybody. So... I turn it, I use it in a positive way. Now it's my tool. I've, I'm going to use it now. You don't get to have that power over me. Now it's my power. I'm going to use it. You see? That's alchemy. That's changing energy. That's taking control of a situation of yourself and going, no, 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 no. It's like superpower, superhuman, superhero kind of shit, but very etherically, energetically, quietly on your own to yourself. What am I doing with this? How am I going to use this energy to transmute it for positive reasons, positive vibes, positive energy instead of negative? What am I going to do with this? For me, it was sit down and and tell this story, get this out about boundaries and confrontation and chaos and distraction and spirituality and timelines and where we're going and all the shit because it's real shit that's happening to all of us in our own ways. And sometimes... A lot of the time for people, you get, you're get you so caught up in the riptide of the shit. It's so in your eyes. It's so in your mouth. It's so com- it so comes so, so violently that it's really, really, really hard to see past that. See any kind of silver lining, you know, to be like, oh, this is all for my greater good. But it is. You just have to process it, get past it, understand it, recognize it, and then and then you can you can use it for yourself for good. You can't bypass the shit because it is shit. It is what it is. You know, it makes you feel bad. It upsets you. You don't like it. It's uncomfortable. It's tension, stress, anxiety. <sighs> It is. It is what it is. You got to deal with it. It is what it is. You can't turn a shit sandwich into anything other than a shit sandwich. But once we acknowledge that, we go, okay, now what? What's what's the lesson in this? What is this about really? What do I take from this? What what do I what did I how did I process that? What what came up? Like what do I need to do? Do I need to do something? 
should I make decisions? Do I, you know, all of these things that changes. It's like, oh, okay. So just being mad at my bitch neighbor for being a fucking asshole. And this is where I have to live and life sucks and fuck her. And how do I retaliate? And what am I going to do? And blah, 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 all the shit I could possibly do and think and feel and say and behave and whatever. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to take a step back and go, interesting, interesting how this is playing out. I just want to take a look at this, take a step back, get the higher perspective, uh, give some time and space to allow the energy to diffuse, <sighs> take some deep breaths, take a bath, sleep on it, write about it, pot about it, whatever open up myself up to my guides my guidance the universe because one thing is for sure i am i am taken care of even though i have these inconveniences with some assholes in my environment doesn't mean that i'm not well taken care of i'm very grateful i'm very blessed i'm very 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 blessed and grateful and lucky it should be who I am what I am and do what I do and how I do it with whom I do it with both incarnate and on the other side of the veil and um, I have full faith in everything that happens no matter what it is and I play in this dimension um, to the best of my ability um, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm definitely not perfect. I I wish I was. <laughs> no lie. I wish I was perfect, but I'm not perfect, and that's okay. Um, but I try to be as as good a, a light warrior, a soldier of of creation, uh, an ambassador for Gaia. I try to do my best to diffuse as much negative energy and bring in as much positive energy as I possibly can each and every day in everything that I do. Um, and that's the best I can do. It's the best any of us can do, right? So I guess with that said, I've said everything I need to say. If you're still here, I thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Um, I appreciate it. I hope this helped you. It definitely helped me um, talk this through uh, to you and and share these wild stories about my life. And um, I hope that that gives you some wisdom and knowledge and education on the things that may pop up in yours and that you have a higher perspective uh, a, a, a transcendent evolved way of seeing these chaotic moments and don't allow yourself to get distracted by the turmoil eye on the prize evolution forward forward ascension light work energy positivity um guidance guardian angel ascended masters archangels all 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 of it all of it all of it all of it there's so much so much so much that we have that we could use and that to help us to lift us up to raise us up to give us faith to 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 land in soft places that it's only our perception of what is sharp and what is unfriendly and what is unkind and what is um inconvenient and we have um, I have the ability to look out my window and look at her house now and and feel bad and angry and whatever it is or I can turn my focus into my environment into my energy into my sacred space and 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 continue to cultivate the energy that that I'm meant to be attached to and if this is a, the beginning of the end of severing from the energies here, then let that be what it is. And I will not resist and I will not um, complain. I will accept that and, and see it as um, me working through this very last level to move into the upper level, another upper level. So with that said, my dear, sweet podcast listener. Um, again, I appreciate you for being here and um, hope to see you around these parts again soon. With that,
that, I bid you adieu. Infinite love and blessings. Don't forget, the key is to create. I love you already. Bye for now. <laughs>